The Raptors have just four games remaining in the regular season and seem locked into a playoff spot in the top six in the East. But what is the best case scenario for the postseason this time around? We will discuss that. We'll discuss the medium case scenario, if that's a thing. And what's the worst case scenario? If all things go wrong, what does it look like for this year's Raptors team in the postseason? We discuss all that and more with Raptors.com's Vivek Jacob coming up in just one second. You are Locked On Raptors, your daily Toronto Raptors podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on? Welcome to episode number 1152 of Locked On Raptors for Tuesday, April the 5th. I'm your host, Sean Woodley of RaptorsHQ.com. You can find me on Twitter as always at Woodley Sean. You can find the show at Locked On Raptors. And you can follow, subscribe to, rate, review the podcast on all your favorite podcast apps for the low, low price of On the House. So please go and check that out. And you can go to YouTube and hit the big red subscribe button. It's very much appreciated when you support the show. That way we're closing in on 1,800 subs, which is lovely, totally wonderful. And we love everybody who subscribed, and I love everybody who plans to subscribe in the future. I also love everybody who makes us your first listen of the day. Thanks, as always, for that. Uh, today's show is also brought to you by our friends over at Prize Picks. You can check out prizepicks.com, use the promo code NBA, or go to your app store and download the app today. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. More on them a little bit later on. But Let's get to it. On today's show, we are going to dig into the best, medium, and worst case scenarios for the Raptors coming into this postseason run. They look like they're pretty solidified in top six position. We have no idea who they're going to play. We don't know if they're going to be fifth or, or sixth in the Eastern Conference. Fourth is pretty much out of the question now. Joining me today to break down all of these many questions and uh, you know try to figure out where things, what the range of outcomes is for your Toronto Raptors is our pal, Vivek Jacob from Raptors.com. Big V, how are you, pal? It's weird talking to you on a Tuesday. Yeah, this is different. Um, but I am well and excited for all the sports that are happening right now. Obviously, the home stretch of the NBA season. You've got the home stretch for all the European leagues and soccer. Mm -hmm. um, Alfonso uh, Davies League. is back today in the Champions League. We love yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> you got Champions League quarterfinals. So it's a fun time to be a sports fan. And it's a fun time also, to be a Raptors fan. Yeah. You've also got your future 100-game winning Toronto Blue Jays starting up on Friday as well, which is very, very exciting. Um, yeah. Called it here. They're going to win 100 games. They're really good. We'll talk about that another time. Uh, we'll do one of these Toronto Roundtable episodes whenever uh, we get another Locked On Blue Jays host lined on up and uh, all that. But, yeah, the, the Raptors, they're coming towards the end of their regular season here. Uh, four games left. Hawks tonight, Sixers Thursday, Rockets Friday, Knicks on Sunday. Uh, unless they lose out, which seems pretty unlikely, they're going to be the fifth or the sixth seed. We'll see what happens with the Bulls and their very diff difficult schedule to close the season. No NBA games last night, so everything's kind of stayed the same because the NBA uh, is cowards and they've just uh, leaned over and said, hey, take the stage, unpaid labor. Uh, we're not going to have Monday games to entertain Sean and his friends. That's fine. Uh, let's get into the best case scenario off the top. We'll get into medium and bad scenarios coming up in the back part of the show. But uh, for you, Big V, what do you think is the best case scenario for the Raptors in this postseason? Can they make it to an NBA Finals by strange happenstance? Can they sneak into a conference finals? How do the matchups have to break for that to happen? What is the best case scenario for your 2021-22 Toronto Raptors in the playoffs? The best case scenario is playing the Milwaukee Bucks as late as possible. <laughs> uh, and, you know, going at it with every other team. I, I think they will take their chances against uh, anyone, including the Milwaukee Bucks. That's how they'll view it. Uh, but I think realistically, they can compete with anyone uh, that's not the Bucks. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, they'll give the Bucks uh, a hard time. It'll probably be a six game series. Um, but yeah, I think that's the best case scenario. Go to the East finals, possibly, uh, if you don't face the Bucks before that. Yeah, I think the Bucks are certainly the boogeyman. I would also probably lump the Celtics in as the boogeyman as well, even without Robert Williams, like they're so good defensively and they do such a good job of not being prone to the matchup game. 
in a way that I think the Raptors are really going to, that's going to be how they thrive in the postseason, right? Like they're going to continue to do what they've done this season where it's okay. All of our guys are six, eight or six, nine. We've got OG in the post. We've got Pascal running downhill. We've got Scotty doing his weird half post, half drive, weird bounce around things. We've got Gary Trent Jr. working the mid range. We've got Fred Van Vliet in the pull up game. Like all of these guys can score in one-on-one situations against easy sort of uh, matchups defensively. And there just aren't any of those on the Celtics. And I think it's going to be really difficult to play the, all right, hunt the switch that you want and go get a bucket because there's not really a switch that you want. Marcus Smart plays huge. We've seen Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum give Pascal Siakam trouble in the past, although I will say I think Siakam is a much better player than he was back in the bubble, and he's done a really good job dealing with difficult defense. So he's probably the most matchup-proof guy on the team, so I'm not terribly worried there. He'll find his buckets, but... I think for the overall sort of strategy, which is, you know, we, we don't move the ball a ton. We don't have a high assist ratio or anything like that. You know, it's uh, we're going to find matchups and, and punish them. And then our defense is going to get us a lot of looks in transition as well. The Celtics seem like the most, most difficult team to get that engine kind of humming against. And so I would lump them into the teams I'm uh, frightful of along with the Bucks. But I do think the best case scenario here is a surprise run kind of akin to the Atlanta Hawks last season to the conference finals that nobody sees coming. It has to happen in a very specific way, though, because the bracket is going to break out. It, you know, it, I think it essentially needs to be the heater one. You get the Bucks and the Celtics as two, three. You get the Sixers and four and the Raptors get that five seed. So you're in the Sixers matchup in the first round. I think that's the series they most likely can win of all of the first round matchups that they're that are on the table here. They win that. They're out of the Bucks and Celtics bracket. And then you get the Heat in the second round. And I think as much as the Heat would be favored against the Raptors, as much as any of these teams would be favored against the Raptors, I should say, they're not favorites against the Sixers either. Um, I, I think there's a world in which they beat the Sixers, beat the Heat, and then get into a conference finals with one of the Celtics or the Bucks. Would I say this is a likely outcome? No, it's probably around like the 10 percentile, whatever outcomes that there are, because the Heat and Sixers are very good, and it's going to take a lot to beat those teams just once, let alone beating them back to back uh, in two consecutive series. But if we're going with the absolute best case scenario, the ceiling of this team, I think conference finals is it if that exact bracket breakdown takes place it could have a whole wrench thrown in the plans as well if the nets end up as the eighth seed and they take on the heat and they beat the heat in round one and then you get the nets in the second round i don't even know how you would sort of look at that matchup um but does my logic kind of check out here that it kind of has to be a very specific bracket set up for that ceiling of the conference finals to be in play yeah i agree i mean at this point it looks like the heat will wrap up the one seed they've got the mm -hmm. two game advantage and so uh you want to be in that four or five ideally um and as you said fourth is out of the question so five is better than six you avoid the bucks um again to the conference finals uh and yeah i agree with you the celtics are tough but i'll take my chances against them uh, as much as i would the heat uh with mm. all the problems that they pose too so uh especially without robert williams i, I do think that is going to be a bit more impactful once uh, this postseason rolls around um and i'm looking forward to you know scotty barnes those uh half post-ups half uh drives to the bucket against uh, marcus smart <laughs> yeah i mean god smart i just exhausts me I, he's so good and i hate that he's so good um the the heat i mean look I, I will. I'm still gonna. I, I'm. Just, I'm gonna disagree and say the Heat. I think are in a whole different tier than the Celtics. Like below them, I think the Celtics, especially matchup wise against the Raptors, it just like if they had a Tyler Hero to go and like hammer 15 times in an ISO game, I'd be like, yeah, great. They don't have a Tyler Hero. They don't have a Max Struess. They don't have a Duncan Robinson. You can go and have Siakam go unleash. You know, all sorts of uh, hell and pain upon. Um, so I, I, I think you know the Heat. Look, they lost the game. They didn't have Jimmy Butler. That That's obviously big. But I, I do think they've played them really tough this season, all four games within five points. Uh, they go two and two. Like, I think there is a blueprint there because the Heat's offense is a little bit suspect in the half court. And boy, oh boy, the Raptors' half court defense has really ratcheted up lately, the Monday game not or Sunday game notwithstanding. But, um, yeah, it, it's, uh, you know, what kind of celebration goes down if they make a conference finals with this team? I mean, it, it, it's obviously like – a grand triumph for you know you go you are the you know the 
what was the second best team in the league in 2019 20 you have the tampa season where it all falls apart and then you come back and make a conference finals with a very different looking roster obviously a lot of the same pieces but a lot of new guys in there as well um what what's your sort of read on like how do you even like you know contextualize it all what does it mean going forward if they do that like it's a uh, I don't think, again, it's not a crazy high outcome in terms of likelihood, but if it happens, I mean, it probably presents a lot of questions for the Raptors to, you know, change the way they view the team going forward, no? Um, Yes and no. I think in terms of the roster construct, you've got a team that you're very confident in the core group, the mm -hmm. that starting five that they've gone to um, between Fred, Gary... OG, Pascal, and Scotty. Uh, and so it's about figuring out how you best complement that five. And uh, whether they go to the conference finals or not, I think that will still remain the goal in the offseason. And uh, if there's a big swing to be made, um, then you look at, you know, potentially breaking up that five. And by big, I mean it's got to be like, <clears throat> you know, pretty damn near Kawhi type big, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you've got you've got to be getting that type of piece back. Um, but yeah, it, I think it all revolves around Scotty and his development, right? Like so much of what we're talking about this season. Um, I will pull the blinds uh, in a second as my face gets completely. <laughs> <laughs> we got Goth V on the pod. We love it. <laughs> um. But yeah, I think with Scotty, you know, you talk about someone that was called a zero level scorer and you expected the offense to be way behind the defense coming into this season. And now he's already, uh, you know, right there for the rookie of the year. You could see him um, potentially maybe even competing for an all star spot next season. Um, if he continues to make those types of leaps then that's the superstar, right? And you've got mm. a lot of complimentary. Like I think about, in some ways, uh, the Dallas situation, right? Where right. Um, the Mavs haven't necessarily had the pieces around Luka. Yeah. But here in Toronto, you've got a really good core mm -hmm. uh, around Scotty already. Um, and so how do you find uh, that next a piece or next couple pieces uh that takes this team to the next level yeah i i think you know for me if they do make the conference finals the best case scenario does come to pass i think it kind of gives you the green light to keep things as they are right and you're not forced to go out and be like all right well we got to go trade for a star now we got to go you know make a consolidation trade because uh like consolidate for what like you've got you've got a really good team that just made a conference finals way ahead of schedule and scotty barnes is kind of at the beginning of whatever he's going to become and the guys you already have in tow you have two all-star level players one likely all nba level player um you know ogs and all defense guy when he's fully healthy if he's fully healthy like it's a. Uh, you got Precious, who, you know, I don't know. I, I'm probably going to put a little money on him to win most improved before next season, just because. Why not? We saw what happened over the course of this season. It probably won't happen because it's a loaded field every season. But, like, that's the kind of leap he's made throughout this year to inspire confidence. It's almost just like an affirmation that, oh, yeah, this is on the right track. Just keep the status quo and things are going to end up being uh, really exciting in the coming years. Uh, we're going to get into the medium scenario and sort of what takes place there in just one second here. But first, we'll let Big V also close his blinds while I do an ad read. We're going to tell you about our friends over at Prize Picks. It is daily fantasy made easy at long last. You got to check out Prize Picks if you're looking for a DFS solution to fantasy basketball. If you just pick two to five pl players and an over under on their projections, you can win up to 10 times on any entry. And it's just you against the projected numbers. There is no shadow expert behind the scenes putting together a lineup you haven't seen yet that you're competing against completely blind. It's just the projections. There's no guesswork, there's no uh, trickery going on. You're just up against the numbers the way it should be. 
Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. And Prize Picks is safe and offers fast withdrawals. Use the award-winning app on both the App Store and Google Play. And it offers any props you can think of, from points scored to rebounds, even steals. It even allows mixed sport entries. So, for example, you can, if you're a baseball head, you can do, uh, hey, the, 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 this Friday, the Raptors are playing the Rockets. You want to do some daily fantasy on Scotty Barnes going off against Jalen Green, and you want to take the over on Vladimir Guerrero Jr. hitting placatas, you can do that and you can go and do it at prize picks it doesn't just offer the nba they've got every sport under the sun and uh for a limited time prize picks has an exclusive no-brainer of an offer for all our users users get 50 bucks for free if a player in your first prize picks entry scores a single point but you must use the code nba that's right this is an exclusive offer available to locked on listeners only sign up today use the code nba for 50 dollars for free if a player in your first prize picks entry scores a single point not many players out there scoring zero points if you're putting money on them in your prize picks entry so go and check them out it's free it's not free fifty dollars it has to happen but it's essentially they're giving you fifty dollars go check out prize picks today and today's show is also brought to you by our pals over at bet online which is your number one source for all your sports betting needs and info find all the latest sports developments including this week's masters championship odds you get podcasts you get reviews of all the news injury updates everything you might need to be the informed wagerer before you place your money down, Bet Online has you covered. They've got all the sports wagering info you need. You got live betting, esports, and scores. You can head to the website today, use your mobile device, and learn more about the trends in the action to tie back in the beloved Toronto Blue Jays, who I'm going to like make the co team of this podcast over the course of this season. I'm sure uh, the this season's starting. Go put money on them to win 100 games and you know, go I think their overs like 91 and a half. That is easy. Go do it. Bet Online is where the game starts. All right, we continue on here talking about best, medium, and worst case scenarios for this year's Toronto Raptors with Vivek Jacob from Raptors.com. Big V, medium case scenario. It's pretty much like a, a, a noble first round loss, right? Everyone's been pegging the Raptors as the annoying team, as the team no one wants to play, as the team everyone's kind of fearful of in the first round, non-Nets division. Um, and I guess like the predicted outcome is, okay, they get a team, they give them a, a real go for their, their money. Maybe they kind of spoil the long-term outlook of a team going to the finals because they've been just run down playing the Raptors for six or seven games. That is kind of the medium case scenario here, right? Is like a, a noble first round exit that leaves everybody feeling pretty all right on the Raptors side of things and leaving the other seat, other side feeling bruised and angry and beat up. Yeah, completely agree here. Uh, if you've, you know, put up a competitive fight in the first round going up against whether it be Philly or Milwaukee or Boston. We'll see how it shakes out. I think I think you can be happy with that. Get some of that experience that Nick Nurse has talked about of these young guys like Scotty and Precious and just getting a taste of, you know, what it takes to uh, prep for a playoff series and understand mm -hmm. all that comes with it and the media coverage and all of that uh that surrounds it so uh yeah you pl play a competitive first round um win or lose you can be pretty pretty satisfied with that i think that's where you know you have to uh step away and look at the season as a whole uh yeah. to appreciate uh what this team has done and how quickly they've grown from what we saw the first couple months to what they are now yeah, I think, you know, barring whatever we lay out as the worst case scenario in the back part of the show, it's pretty hard to see a scenario where the playoffs come to an end, even if it's just in a few weeks time, a couple weeks, whenever the first round is over. I don't even know. This doesn't start for like a week and a half at this point because of the plan. But, you know, whenever the playoffs, playoffs come to an end, it's going to be difficult to look at this season as anything but an abject success. Like, I, I think the growth internally of all of these guys you know scotty barnes pascal siakam getting back and you know exceeding his previous levels fred van fleet becoming an all-star gary trent jr showing a ton of pop og you know maybe didn't take the steps everybody was dreaming of when people were pegging him as an all-star but there were clear steps there and he has proven himself to be one of the biggest drivers of success on this team when he's available and that is a valuable player to have around like all of those 
little developments, the pressures that you, uh, you know, growth over the course of the season, the insane, like grade seven to eight level growth spurt we've seen from him. Uh, also not figuratively, but you know, or not literally, but figuratively. Um, then you've got Chris Boucher becoming a, you know, a winning player. Like all of these, incremental developments are what this season is about and the story of this season that is going to be told for years to come and whatever the medium scenario is even if it's a first round loss that's not going to undercut anything that took place so far throughout the season let me ask you this you know we've talked about you know the raptors and which teams that they could potentially go up against and and, and, you know make life a living hell for you know maybe it's just the answers the sixers but it, it who do you think like, you know, there's all the, the, okay, well, this executive is like, oh, the Raptors are freaking me out. I don't want to play them. Which team do you think is leaking the most of that fearful rhetoric about the Raptors? Uh, <laughs> like, if you're like, if you were to find, if you're going to Zach Lowe's phone and find out which execs are text, texting him Raptors fears, uh, who do you think has the most of them? Philly. I, I think when you look at the way uh, they can sort of be abused in transition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I think that's something that Philly's probably looking at and saying they want no part of that when uh, James Harden is looking at dealing with uh, all the different players that the Raptors can throw at them, including Precious Achua. The fact that you can throw Precious Achua at both Joel Embiid and uh, James Harden is pretty ridiculous. Um, mm-hmm. And so I think that would be... Uh, at the top of the list in terms of te- teams that would not want anything to do with the Raptors. Um, you know, uh, beyond that, uh, probably go Miami next Boston after that. Uh, I think the Milwaukee on, on some level probably wants the Raptors. You, know, you think they want that. the Raptors? Yeah. Yeah, I mean they uh, did I, want the heat last year. That is a good point. They uh, they yeah they probably want to exercise some of those demons, um, yeah. and they'll believe that they're they're the better team as as they should. Uh, yeah, and and Giannis will probably want that too. So um, that's probably the one team that I'll say is is saying, you know, give us the Raptors, bring it on, bring on these freaks. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the thing with the Sixers, I. I keep talking myself more and more into the Raptors beating them <laughs> as, as like the playoffs draw near. And like I was listening last night to the Oakland Floor podcast with a friend of the show, Michael Pina, and future guest of the show, Ro- Rohan Natkerny. Um, and, and they were talking about, you know, the Sixers and like, are we even sure that's like a, an obvious like Sixers win that series type of matchup? If you were to play that series 100 times, Vivek, how many times do the Raptors win it, do you think? Um, probably 35. Yeah. I might even inch up to 40, honestly. The Sixers, yeah. I am real close to declaring to be enormous frauds. Uh, you know, Embiid is amazing. Hey, he's incredible. James if, Harden, if the Sixers go up 3 1, I'm definitely betting on the Raptors. <laughs> Like, I guess my, the, my reason for asking that is, like, is there a world in which the medium case scenario is they just beat the Sixers in round one and then lose? Like, that feels a little bit better. That's not quite best case scenario, but that's a pretty great scenario. But, like, if they get that 4-5, I think there will be a lot of people talking themselves into, like, them being the sexy upset pick of the first round. And maybe it does kind of change the goalposts a little bit. I don't know. Um, I wouldn't. I just don't want to set that expectation. Where sure. if they lose to the Sixers now, it's a disappointment. Um, yeah. It's it's kind of like uh, how people are looking at Canada's group for the World Cup. And all of a sudden, we're talking about how old Croatia is. and almost Well, they are. Uh, 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 Luka Midrich uh, is a, well, like 39. What is he? Like, come on. The, 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 they were old in the last World Cup, and that took place 10 years ago. Uh, come on. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm just saying, uh, you know. If if people are expecting expecting Canada to finish uh, in the top two in that group, you know you're probably setting yourself up for disappointment. I, I think it would be an, an accomplishment, a huge accomplishment to advance for them. And the same way, I think it would be a big accomplishment for the Raptors to get out of the first round, uh, regardless of the opponent. Yeah, well, Belgium is fraud, so that's fine. Uh, well, we don't need. Even... <laughs> I've already completely have fun with it. Into, have have uh, all the fun with it that you want. 
Yeah, I've talked myself into they're getting nine points out of the group, baby. Uh, the old ash Croatia team can't hang with Alfonso Davies. It's just no, they're gonna have the best player on the field at every one of their games. What are we talking about here? Um, we can relitigate World Cup talk uh, later on once the season, uh, <laughs> once next season begins and is in line yeah. with the World Cup. But uh, for now, isn't that going to be a time? Oh, man, it's going to be I might take time off the podcast just to watch World Cup soccer. We'll see. Uh, but we're going to finish up on the other side and take a pivot into bad things. The, the worst case scenario for this year's Raptors team. We'll get to that in just one second. But first, I want to tell you about our friends over at Rock Auto. I've been telling you about Rock Auto for a very long time, and it's because they're great and we really support what they do. I am a person who hates the mechanic. I don't like going to the mechanic to get stuff done in my car. I'm always worried they're going to find something and be like, this part needs fixing. And I don't even know if they're telling me the truth. Maybe it's just like, oh, that's probably fine. But hey, we can squeeze money out of this idiot if we say that he needs to fix it. It might be illegal for them to do that. I don't know. I know nothing about cars. RockAuto.com is the site for me because it makes me feel like I'm in control. I can go on RockAuto.com if I need a part for my car. I can search in the part. I can find the make, year, and model of my car and all of the different parts available for that vehicle. And you get options. It's not just a one part that the, the mechanic happens to carry at the chain store. Sometimes they don't even have it in-house. they got to order it from Canadian Tire down the street. It's just a whole big racket. RockAuto.com is saving you money. They're giving you selection, and it's easy. You can just go to their website today, rockauto.com, navigate their super easy-to-use interface, find all the parts that you might need from the important stuff like brake parts to the aesthetic things like new carpets. It's the end of winter. You probably want those new carpets. You've been slopping it up with sludge and salt and slime and all manner of other winter-related S-words. Go and check out rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck and right locked on. And there, how did you hear about us, Box? You know that we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the car parts you will ever need at rockauto.com. And we round out your first listen of the day, talking worst case scenarios for this year's Toronto Raptors team. I mentioned in the last segment, Big V, it's going to be really hard for this to be deemed a failure of a season for the Raptors. But is there a series of events that could transpire in the playoffs that leaves Raptors fans feeling hollow, empty, wishing for, uh, you know, the tear downs, trade them all, blow it up. This is an unsuccessful season. I don't think that's happening. That would be ridiculous. But um, is there a world in which, you know, we kind of leave this, se this season with a little bit of sour grapes because of the way things go in a potential worst case scenario? What happens in said worst case scenario, do you think? Yeah, worst case scenario is uh, Pascal somehow goes back to being, uh, you know, bubble Pascal. Yeah. Um, Fred, Fred's knee gets a lot more serious. Um, they get swept out of the first round by Philly. Yeah. Uh, that would probably be the worst case scenario. OG can't even play with whatever's <laughs> going on with his hip. Um, so it seems pretty out there just how, you know, getting to the conference finals right now, actually, I, I, I probably say getting to the conference finals is more likely than, than this scenario. They're um, getting washed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So that, that would probably be the worst case scenario. It's, it's hard to envision a Nick nurse team getting swept. That is a really good shout out to what's more likely one of our favorite parlor games on the show. Going to the conference finals or getting swept in the first round. I'm going to put that as a poll question on the on the YouTube channel, baby. You just helped us improve our SEO. Thanks. Baby. There you go. Um, yeah, I think you're right. I, I think the worst case scenario does have to come against one of the teams that we perceive to be maybe a little bit easier of a matchup. Because like if Milwaukee comes in, and Giannis BT in five or even sweeps you. Like, can you really be upset about that? Like, he's playing like an MVP again. He's incredible. He's been just devouring souls for the last little while here. That seems like it could happen. And I don't think it changes anything about what this season was for the Raptors. Frankly, I think making the top six is enough for me. Like, this was a successful yeah. season, full stop. Nothing is going to change that. 
And it's not going to change the direction of the team if they, you know, lose in unceremonious fashion. Maybe they look a little bit longer and harder at the idea of consolidating their pieces and making a bigger trade. Maybe that brings in, like, I don't know, some certain players on the Utah Jazz as targets they might go after. Please just, I don't really want to be in that business. Stay away. It's all rotten vibes down there. But uh, (laughs) we don't have to get into that right now. But I think it does have to come against the Sixers or the Heat where you lose in that sort of embarrassing way when you've been projected as this sexy pick and you make people look stupid for having you as their sexy pick to upset in the first round. You know, Embiid goes for, you know, 35 a game and completely demolishes the idea of not playing with the center, completely makes you rethink and reconsider if you can build the team like this going forward. Um that said, I think the fix there is not to change the overall complexion of the team. It's to go find a seven foot glute you can throw out there and pick up some fouls against Embiid. But, you know, as sort of a break glass in case of emergency guy. But yeah, I, I think that is certainly on the table. Like, so say they get swept by the Sixers. You know, Harden goes off. They have no way to contain his dribble penetration. That He just, you know, completely demolishes Fred Van Vliet. You know, you get Tobias Harris overcoming all of the demons of the past and shooting better than two for 13 from three in a playoff game against the Raptors. Uh, You get Matisse Thibel chipping in offensively. Tyrese Maxey, you know, he's been the profile of guard who's given the Raptors problems this season as a slippery guy who can get downhill, Um, you know, would be a problem if, you know, Scotty Barnes gets that assignment or something like that. Um, you know, what happens if that, you know, what, what do you think the direction is if they lose in four games to the Sixers, everyone's got sad, sour tastes left in their mouth. What do you think the next steps are for the team? I don't think the front office would really change course too much. Right. Um, I think in terms of, uh, you know, maybe if what i said with that worst case scenario if pascal like really really struggles Mm -hmm. in those games then you start to think about uh you know what that next step looks like um and really seriously pivoting towards scotty as opposed to you know just growing with both of them um i think that's something that might become a conversation again as unlikely as i think it may be Mm -hmm. um you would look at, you know, one, one thing that he did was, was sort of look to punish Gary as much as they could uh, on the defensive end. Um, sure. If if he emerges as a serious liability uh, in the postseason, then, then maybe that's something that you look at. Get him out uh, of here for someone who's 6'8", baby. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe those are a couple of the things that enter the conversation if, you know, this worst case scenario does play out. Um, mm-hmm. I'm sure people are cursing us for even putting it into existence uh, by talking about <laughs> Look, it. Look, man, it's a daily um, podcast. We have to examine everything because what else <laughs> are we going to do? <laughs> uh, but beyond that, you know, uh, I, I would say not too much because, you know, in terms of what the future of this team looks like, it's Scotty Barnes, baby. <laughs> yeah. So, 100%. I think, you know, the two things that I think could befall the team that really, I think, sort of make you reckon with some things. Like, I think Gary Trent Jr. is a potential trade piece this summer anyway. We can get to that another day. But, like, the contract and everything like that suggests, like, oh, maybe that's a thing that they look at. Um, But, like, the two guys who stand out are the two linchpin guys. The two guys who at the start of the season, the conversation was, are these guys too old to pair with Scotty Barnes? Uh, I don't know why I sounded like Barney there, but hey, whatever. I can do a Barney impression. Cool. Um, (laughs) But like Fred Van Vliet, if things go wrong for him in the postseason, it's going to, I think, be pretty easy to be like, well, it's probably because of the knee and whatnot. And, you know, we know what he's done in the postseason before his defense plays, his catch and shoot three point shooting certainly plays the on ball stuff maybe doesn't. And I think the Raptors have taken steps to ensure that they're not overly dependent on Fred Van Vliet creating advantages in the half court. They have Pascal, they have Scotty Barnes to go ahead and do that. And so I don't really know if that sort of issue that Fred's had with length and size is really going to rear its ugly head, especially if like James Harden is guarding him. Yes, Harden is strong and bigger, but he's also James Harden and is pretty prone to blow buys and whatnot. So I'm not really terribly concerned there about that like it would be a much bigger problem if the Sixers still had Ben Simmons for example to throw on Fred Van Vliet then I'd be certainly concerned um if you look at Pascal Siakam the other guy who I think things could in theory go wrong for 
you know, it probably does take a similar shape to what we saw back in the bubble. Although I think he's a much better playmaker than he was back then. You know, he did not have the quick reads that he does now. And I think he's kind of set himself up for like, there's going to be a baseline of success for him, even if maybe the shooting touches off, like the playmaking will still be there. He's still going to drive good things in the Raptors half court offense. And I think he's been performing under such difficult circumstances this season that you could almost liken some of the stuff he's come up against in terms of the different defenses. Like he's been doubled as much as anybody else in the NBA this season. Like he's played against playoff style defense a lot this year and he's powered through it pretty damn well. And so if things completely collapse, I would be pretty surprised. Um, but if they do, then yeah, you're probably sitting there with the question of, okay, you know, allocation of resources is, is Siakam a guy who you can ha afford to have when you also have all these other guys and Scotty Barnes is clearly going to take the mantle from him one day. I still think, you know, you got years left on his deal. I would still roll him back and say, oh, oh we came into the season thinking Pascal is a clear number two and can fit next to a great star. Uh, that doesn't have to change. Like Scotty can just kind of ascend. Maybe that accelerates the rate at which Scotty takes the reins from Siakam as like the main you know, offensive initiator or whatever. But I, I don't think barring like some absolute catastrophe, we're looking at this as some sort of rec referendum on Pascal Siakam as a player, um, just because I think he's shown throughout the season that he can sort of persevere through really difficult circumstances and have really excellent results on the other side. Um, any last thoughts here on worst case scenarios, things that could befall the Raptors that seem, uh, you know, potentially troublesome in the postseason, or you think we are all covered on this, uh, these bad vibes. <laughs> I mean, there might be a game where they have zero three point makes. But... <laughs> True. Could happen, <laughs> but, but they won't have Kyle Lowry putting up a zero in a first game of a playoff series. So that's, that's good. That's, that's a nice change. Uh, we love Kyle Lowry. I'm just joking. Obviously. I mean, but that that ended up being a good <laughs> omen. It did. It did. You're right. Uh, that <laughs> man, that Magic game, one of the weird ones in uh, the, yeah. like, oh, uh, Marcus Gasol and Kawhi Leonard, just a casual defensive miscue, allowing for a DJ Augustine game winner in the year of our Lord 2019. Sure, yeah, basketball sports are weird, as it turns out. Uh, <laughs> we could probably leave it there though uh thanks so much for uh you know getting into the hypothetical with me here big v we will certainly examine these types of questions and more as we go forward here postseason coming up and everything like that uh and by the time we talk next on the show we'll be teeing up a playoff series baby which is very very exciting next week will be very heavy playoff preview we're going to do a crossover episode with the host of the show covering whichever team the raptors happen to play uh so you have that to look forward to we'll talk about it with big v when he's on next too but until then we'll wrap it and leave it there big v anything you want to promote before we get out of here the usual stuff raptors.com cbc sports you can follow me on twitter at vivek m jacob that's about it Go do it. Uh, you can find me at Woodley Sean. You can subscribe to, rate, review the podcast wherever you get your podcasts for the low, low price of On the House. You can go to YouTube and hit the big red subscribe button. It very much helps the show out there, too. And, uh, yeah, go make your second listen of the day now. Locked on NBA. They're covering the league every single night, digging into awards talk this week, going through the playoff races. There's still lots to be decided in terms of seeding. If you're curious what's going on around the league, you're not watching every game around the league. Locked on NBA is a great download on all the important bits that you might have missed. So go and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube as well, and with that, we will leave you there. We'll be back again on Wednesday to break down Raptors Hawks with another episode of Locked on Raptors. Bye-bye.